Welcome to episode nine of Plants and Light. We've reached the third and final fundamental of horticultural lighting, light quantity. Light quantity or light intensity is measured in a lot of different ways. But in horticulture, we're usually focused on light that falls in a specific range of about 400 to 700 nanometers. This is called the PAR range or photosynthetically active radiation. Light in the PAR range is usually measured in two ways, instantaneous or cumulative. The instantaneous is usually measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. The cumulative is measured in moles per meter squared per day. The instantaneous could be thought of like how much flow of water comes out of this hose every second. In light, that's called the photosynthetic photon flux density. How many photons are flowing out per second? The cumulative measurement is in moles per meter squared per day. A million micromoles equals one mole. So it's a lot of these seconds adding up together to reach a mole. And that's because you're measuring the total amount of light in a day. You aren't just looking at a second, you're looking at a total day, which it would be like if I left this hose on for 24 hours, how much total water would go out in that 24 hours? That would be my cumulative measurement. In horticulture, we call that the DLI, the daily light integral. That's the amount of light measured in moles, which is one mole is a million micromoles per meter squared per day, compared to the instantaneous, which would just be micromoles per meter squared per second. Reaching a target DOI by delivering a lot of light at once is usually not ideal because plants have a light saturation point, a point at which they can't receive any more light in that instant. So if your instantaneous light intensity is super high, a lot of that might be wasted because you'll already have reached their light saturation point. The other extreme of doing a low light intensity for a very long photo period, like 24 hours of low light, can also have drawbacks because a lot of plants are responsive to photo period, the light duration. So you might affect the plant's flowering responses because you have the light on for too long of a photo period because you're trying to deliver a specific amount of light. So growers have to find a balance of light intensity and photo period so they can reach a target DLI. Usually the first step is considering what's the plant's photo period. So if I have to work with a 12 hour photo period, I know I need a light that has an intensity that the light intensity over 12 hours in a day will help me reach my target DLI. One of the biggest challenges for new growers is delivering the right amount of light. Too little and you get leggy growth. Too much and you could fry the crop up into a, a crispy little dust. A meter is one of the best tools a grower can have for knowing exactly how much light they're giving their crop. With a light meter, you can know how much light are you delivering in that moment and then with that, you can calculate your DLI. And there's a lot, of, a lot of recommended DLIs that universities post for a variety of crops. Here are some of my recommended DLIs for microgreens, leafy greens, and flowering crops. But your target DLI for your environment is gonna depend on a lot of factors, like the crop maturity. You know, what stage of growth is your crop in? How mature is it? How was it grown? What spectrum is it grown under? What environment is it in? Is it hot or cold or humid? Light meters are great so you can know exactly how much light is being delivered, but it's also really nice just to see how lights are practically being used in a variety of applications so you can pick the right light for your environment. So let's take a look around the greenhouse and I'll show how I'm using a variety of lights based on their light intensity in a variety of environments. Varieties, varieties, yay varieties. We'll start with one of the uses that requires the lowest light intensity, rooting cuttings. 
fresh cuttings like these don't require a lot of light. And in fact, too much light will damage them. These fresh cuttings don't have a root system and minimal ability to uptake water. An intense light will force them to transpire more. And if they're transpiring a lot and don't have a root system to uptake water, they dry out and die. This is an application where it's really useful to have low light while they're establishing roots. These ones are around under about 250 to 150 micromoles. This would be the amount of light that you'd get in a greenhouse if you had several layers of shade. So it's, it's fairly low and cuttings can be rooted at, at light levels as low as 50 micromoles. Generally, in this application, you'll want to run the light for about 20 hours. Right next to the fresh cuttings, I have plants that already have roots. These are some basil plants that were started from seed and they're ready to grow. So on this side, I have three LED bars compared to the one on this side. I'm getting almost close to 400 micromoles on this side. And that's a lot of light. These basil plants are gonna love that. I'll also run this light for about 20 hours a day. I like to give my plants a, a little bit of a break at night. I've found it, it really helps them. They can get a little stressed when you run 24 hours. When you run 24 hours, it does keep the environment stable. So it's really a grower preference. Some growers, they run their lights 24 hours to keep a stable environment. But I've found there's more benefits in giving your plants a, a little bit of rest I do about four hours of rest, so they're on 20 hours, off for four. And I find during that night cycle, they, they jump up a good bit and they just seem to be a lot healthier. Greenhouse growers can use some really powerful lights and position them high above the crop. But most indoor growers don't have the luxury of super tall ceilings, like in this grow tent. I only have a, you know, a few feet of clearance above my crop. So I have to pick a light that's appropriate for this proximity to the crop, like this 315 watt ceramic metal halide, or some of the other less intense lighting options. There's some slightly less intense high pressure sodium lights, and metal halide. And this is when you have a few feet. When you only have a few inches, like on this grow rack, then you have to consider what kind of lighting option is suitable for only a few inches of space. And that's often gonna be your T5 lighting, LED bars like this. And then there's other options, like larger LED fixtures like these, and these are great for indoors because you can control their output. You can program it. So if I have a smaller space and I've got to, and I've got to place my light really close to the crop, I can reduce the intensity so it doesn't hurt the crop. But if I have a larger space, I can raise up that light, increase the intensity, and provide light for a lot larger footprint. Yes, my big boy. Light intensity in a greenhouse can get a little bit tricky because you're working around natural light levels, which can vary by location, by season, by what structure are you using and how well does the light get through the structure. But there are some lights that make it easy. Like this light can be connected to a light meter that measures natural light levels and it can increase or decrease its intensity based on the natural light. So if there's a lot of natural light, it will decrease its intensity, or if there's not much, it will up its intensity. And this is to reach a target intensity, so you can reach a target DLI. If you don't have a light that is connected to a fancy meter, well, there are still ways to figure out how long your light should be on and what is a good target intensity. And I made a full video on calculating light levels in a greenhouse, so check that one out. It's, it's super helpful for going through all the math and the, the calculations to figure out how long your light should be on. In the last video, I talked about a new technique of LEDs in summer. 
And this technique actually uses all three fundamentals of horticultural lighting. So it's, uh, let's go on through them. We've got light quantity or light intensity. In the summer, we will draw shade to reduce the intensity because in the middle of the day, that light coming through can actually be too much and can damage the crops. Then we have light duration or the photo period, which we extend. We'll have the LED light on for about 20 hours. So we'll extend the delivery of time, but at each instant, the amount delivered is less. We'll still reach a target DLI or the total amount of light delivered in a day will be the same or even greater, but it's delivered in smaller increments so it never overloads the plant. And then light quality. We adjust the spectrum. The LEDs have a good bit of blue light in them and that can help create compact growth. So. One of the, the problems with growing in the summer is the warm weather can actually make plants stretch. The lettuce can stretch, the basil can stretch, making it unmarketable. But the blue light in the spectrum can help counteract that and keep the plants more compact. And the LEDs are really efficient, so they aren't generating a lot of heat and heating up the greenhouse. So it makes it even easier to use them in the summer. Lastly, there's, there's a few other factors that are going to affect light intensity. Pretty much all grow lights reduce intensity over time. So it's important to either measure the output of your lights or check with the manufacturer and see what they recommend for replacement time. After how many hours should you replace the bulbs? Or if you're using an enclosed hood, like an air-cooled hood for your grow light, it's important to keep that glass clean because if there's any dust on that that's going to reduce your output and it's possible to increase light a little bit by making your grow room more reflective painting the surfaces white or using a reflective metallic color I don't know what that is in my grow tents but it's it's reflective this has been episode 9 of Plants and Light. In the next episode, we look at how to bring the three fundamentals together to choose a grow light. I'm Farmer Tyler, and the more you know, the better you grow. This episode was made possible with support from Hydro Farm. In this episode, we saw the VGS Grow Rack, the Oxyclone 40 site cloning system, the Oxyclone 20 site cloning system, the Phantom DE, HBS, or double-ended high-pressure sodium light, the Autopilot PX1 controller, the Solar System 1100, the Solar System controller, and many other tools that made this grow possible. Thank you, Hydro Farm. This is my movie voice.